Now, we have been uh, talking a lot about NFTs uh, today, yesterday, and NFTs are part of this beautiful tokenization trend. My colleagues at the World Economic Forum predict that in the upcoming five years, 10% of global GDP will be stored on the blockchain. With me today is Jorge, Jorge I may say, I, I hope I pronounce this uh, correctly, Jorge Senna from Securitize, one of the largest and leading companies in the global tokenization sector. Jorge, am I pronouncing this correctly? <laughs> it's, it's, it's Jorge. Jorge. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. You're joining us from Spain, is that correct? That's correct, yes. I'm based in, in Madrid, in Spain. Nice. Um, can you surely tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, how did your blockchain uh, journey start and how did you end up at Securitize? Well, I'm, uh, I'm an engineer uh, by, by my original training and uh, I got very curious around the, the blockchain space, particularly from a, from a technology perspective. This was something that I think from uh, uh, other people got more exposed from the uh, speculative drive of it, but, but I came from, from, from the tech world. And uh, I also got the opportunity to engage with uh, Carlos Domingo, which was a uh, uh, former boss of mine uh, while we were both working on, on Telefonic and he was running the, the technology innovation branch there. And he had just created uh, a, a venture capital fund called the Spice BC, uh, which they were trying to issue in the blockchain. They wanted to do this uh, crazy thing, which was issuing a, a venture capital fund in the blockchain so that people could own uh, their participation in the fund as tokens and they were thinking of expanding this capacity as a, as a full platform and uh, and offering it to other companies that wanted to issue assets on the blockchain and that was the the basis of security yeah and he asked me if i wanted to join this uh, uh, this uh, this enterprise and uh, i said that that sounded interesting so i i joined and i started working with with security initially uh, in some specific projects uh, to, to try to drive the, the model and, and eventually I ended up running first the product and now the product and engineering organization for Securitize. Wonderful. Now, uh, can you surely tell us a little bit more about uh, Securitize? I already mentioned that you're really active in the uh, tokenization uh, industry. What does Securitize, uh, Securitize exactly do? Well, Securitas at the end of the day, it's trying to leverage the blockchain to bring a um, digital experience to buying, to holding, to trading, to managing the life cycle of, of financial instruments, of securities. So uh, Securitas, as I mentioned, uh, started as an initiative of creating a, a venture capital fund that would be represented on the blockchain and then moved into uh, becoming a tech company that would provide a platform to, to do this uh, process of tokenization of representing as token securities on the on the blockchain uh, from that initial step we have evolved over time and now I would say that we're a, a fintech company we're regulated in the US because we're a registered transfer agent and a licensed broker dealer and uh, we have also regulated marketplace for trading digital securities but um, at the end of the day at the core it's our thinking that using blockchain to represent uh, assets and, uh, and financial instruments it's uh, it's something that it's going to uh, revolutionize financial markets you mentioned uh, uh, securities um i also uh, tokenizing other assets are you into nfts like content creative works or uh, other assets not not currently precisely because we're our focus has been uh, around this uh, kind of a regulatory environment and, and trying to bring uh, a, a try of mix between what's possible within the uh, technical constraints and, and uh, elements on the blockchain and the, and the things that come based on the regulation. So so we have focus uh, fundamentally on, on securities. And while we have looked at, um, at NFTs, uh, uh, the, the reason is that while well, they're a, a very um, a great way to represent collectibles, to represent art, to represent uh, unique things. They are not a, a good mechanism to represent security. So we support them in different ways. So for instance, when issuers are issuing a tokenized digital security using our services, we also provide them, uh, for instance, with an F NFT commemorating their launch, a sort of 
ringing the bell on Wall Street. But uh, but since NFTs themselves are not securities, this is not the our, our core offering, and, and we're not doing um, NFTs by themselves. No. Now, where are we right now with tokenization? Uh, you mentioned uh, regulations. So we are, of course, in conversation with the uh, regulators to look what is actually possible, what not. Um, is it already fully functional? Are you like putting a lot of like uh, financial assets on the blockchain, and this is going fluently, and a lot of companies are actually joining you, or are there still like some really big hurdles to be taken? I mean, at the end of the day, tokenizing, it's taking a real world asset and representing it as something that you can own parts of uh, on the blockchain. The, that's uh, uh, what um, traditionally has been done for companies. You can own a piece of a company and that's called a share at the end of the day. And uh, in tokenization, what we're using is the blockchain for uh, for that. Uh, and there are lots of initiatives. We have issued already those kind of securities on chain. Uh, but but uh, we still see that there are uh, certain hurdles that, that need to be uh, handled. Uh, for sure, regulation, it's, it's one of those. Uh, but, uh, uh, but also, without any regulations, things would be, uh, uh, things would be much simpler. Uh, but also, the market would be more subject to scams and to pump and dump schemes and so on. Uh, because although there's regulation that uh, is definitely outdated and, and not taking into consideration one of the, the things that uh, new technology is bringing, it also needs to consider that their intended goal is to protect investors and the market. And um, actually, our goal and, and our vision is to try to make these regulations simpler for different players, for issuers of assets, for investors, or for other markets participants. And that's that's the at the core of what Securitas does. Our process, which includes, for instance, uh, what we call Securitas ID, which is an investor passport, uh, solves the requirements for compliant onboarding of investors that want to participate in an, in an offering or uh, on secondary marketplaces. And with our smart contracts, we're able to take care of regulation uh, um, uh, for issued tokens so that we are able to keep them within compliance and ensure that uh, they are only transferred when, uh, when they should be. And uh, Translation services, tools, at the end of the day, the regulation is a hurdle, but uh, the idea is that we want to make it simpler for, for the different participants and take that hurdle in security. Is this moment, uh, I'm, we've been speaking about the regulation, I think you're working with the financial industry, they would probably require a lot of regulation, they would really welcome a lot of regulation to make it for them, you know, really reduce the risks of working with blockchain, with financial assets on the blockchain. Um, when, we, um, <coughs> um, when we look at the companies that you're working with, um, what is usually the reason why companies for now are not interested in tokenizing their assets? Is it still a lack of regulation? Uh, is it maybe because what you mentioned is for them, they just don't understand how it works or well, with the ones that we work with, they are interested in tokenizing. So, so that's that's usually it, and and, and they, they see the advantages that come from it. Usually, a, a, a company that is not interested on on tokenization, it's probably because and they consider that their current needs are met, that they they have sufficient uh, ability to uh, fundraise when they are doing a primary, that they have uh, 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 good liquidity for their for their assets. And that the the um, the burdens, let's say, of lifecycle management of of keeping the relationship with their investors or the uh, servicing their assets, it's something that it's not costly uh, for them. And and that fundamentally happens in in experience in public markets. Big companies um, need to spend uh, a, a lot of money on that, but they have it, and they are able to. Uh, raise uh, funds uh, because they have good lines of credits, they have good liquidity because they list in public stock exchanges, and they are uh, not concerned about the uh, regulatory costs of reporting, auditing, and so on that comes with uh, those public markets and with the servicing of the, of the assets that they have. But those things are very costly and, and a big uh, limitation for uh, for private companies, for uh, companies that uh, that are still at an earlier stage and may have issues uh, fundraising, 
and that uh, they may get problems uh, getting investors because they don't want to lock, lock funds in that investment in the uh, for the long term and would be able to have the the ability to 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 get liquidity for that investment as they need it or that the costs for for providing services to that are are very high and uh, and that's precisely what we have seen that with uh, tokenization and blockchain technology it's it's an advantage that we can bring to this market cool when we are looking at nfts what, what's your opinion about uh, nfts do you think it's a great uh, trend or so as i said it's it's this would be more a personal opinion because uh, in securities as i mentioned we're, we're not particularly dealing with uh, with nfts i think from a technology uh, standpoint they are a very simple concept which is uh, uh, something that it's also very powerful just like erc20 which was the representation of tokens themselves uh, uh, was something very simple but that has created a lot of uh, use cases and has created uh, a lot of uh, capabilities on top of the blockchain and, and DeFi has been built on top of the basis that uh, erc20 was built so with with nfts we we're seeing something something the, uh, like this and then with the improvements uh, around user experience that have happened in the last uh, in recent times uh, around web3 that people now can very much easily uh, interact using a wallet uh, uh, through their uh, through a web experience and this has created a lot of cool applications to flourish and create marketplaces and the ability to represent uh, 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 art in a in a way that it's uh, totally different and um, and i and i think that's that's something that that it's very interesting i also think that uh, as when we're dealing with nfts in the context of uh, representing collectibles or or art or uh, um, or or any of these kind of things we need to also understand that the expectation would be that uh, m most of the assets out there uh, will lose their uh, their value uh, because uh, that's what um, uh, that's what happened also with art and with collectibles not every a trading card becomes uh, uh, something that it's worth a lot more than it was worth what it was issued. Most of them end up being worth less than uh, what they cost at uh, issuance time. And uh, similarly with uh, with art, not everything that goes into a frame becomes something worthy of a museum. Yeah. Um, something totally different, but a question from the audience. Um, what about quantum computing? Should we worry? That's uh, an interesting question. Uh, I, I don't think we need to to worry at this point in time, but I think that of course uh, quantum computing is going to revolutionize many of the assumptions that uh, that uh, some of the elements of cryptography are currently running on, and, and that will end up having a, having an impact. Uh, but I also think that that's how the the technology cycles uh, evolve over time and things that didn't make a lot of sense to be considering uh, a few years from now are now something that um, is, uh, uh, some years uh, ago uh, now are things that anybody can run from a phone. So, uh, uh, of course, we need to be uh, uh, looking at what are the possibilities of technology, but I don't think we should be worried. We should be excited about uh, new technology. So, talking about excitement, um, what are you excited about uh, for the upcoming year? So, I'm, I'm very excited about what we're doing in securities around the well, securities markets and our ability to create a, a, a marketplace that is actually going to be able to bring liquidity to these uh, private securities uh, thanks to, to using the blockchain technology. So, this is something that is still very nascent. nascent. The, the liquidity is still a promise for or uh, tokenized securities, uh, but it's but it's something that increasingly is happening, and and it's going to s very much change and uh, the financial space uh, uh, for the for the coming future. And blockchain in general, I think blockchain in general is exciting. So that's that's what we so every. So I mean, I mean like every, uh, every for the upcoming year. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, uh, what is the exciting trends that you foresee in the upcoming year? What are you really looking forward to? I'm very looking forward to to seeing how we can go into a more uh, 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 wide expanded ecosystem for 
for the the model of world computer that can be working in a sustainable way. I think that uh, and the model that Ethereum has created it has been uh, very powerful, but right now it has become a blockchain that it's almost impracticable due to, to gas costs, and, and that has become a, a hurdle for particularly for assets that were issued uh, several years ago at, uh, at a point in which gas costs uh, didn't seem like a problem, and that right now uh, uh, dealing with certain um, assets or, or currency, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's too expensive. And yes, there are solutions around the uh, uh, layer two, but, but I think that we're still waiting to get um, a, a, a new ecosystem that that will really, really drive the market the same way that things like the DeFi uh, initiatives are flourishing in, in, in Ethereum. Some are moving to uh, some layer two, some are moving to uh, some blockchains, uh, new blockchains like Solana, but, but, uh, but I think that still the the basis of what's happening it's still ethereum and and uh, i i think some big changes are going to come uh, in that way let's see if we will see all the big changes coming up in the upcoming year um jorge mr serna from securitas thank you so much for joining us from spain really appreciated this uh, conversation so uh, thank you so much for your time all the interesting insights and uh, wishing you all the best with securitas thank you very much Cheers.